Yeah. Uh, let's welcome the next speaker, Juha and uh, Miko. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Juha Harvinen, and this is joint work with Mika Koivisto titled Revisiting Bayesian Network Learning, which small vertex cover. So I'll start by introducing the main concepts and then discuss our new learning and sampling algorithms and conclude by discussing some possible future directions. So we are taking the score-based approach on structural learning of Bayesian networks. And this means that for each vertex of the DAG, we have a score function that assigns a score to each possible parent set of that vertex. And then the score of a DAG is simply the product over all these vertices such that we take the product of these local scores. And the goal of Bayesian network structural learning problem is then to find a DAG that maximizes the score. And as most of you probably know, this problem is NP hard in general. And it should also be noted out here that uh, typically we optimize the sum of log logarithmic scores instead, which is equivalent to this problem. But because we are also looking into sampling and counting Bayesian network structures, we use this product form, which is more sensible in this case. And these problems are motivated by the Bayesian approach on Bayesian structural learning where a single DAG might not be enough to compute, for example, certain kinds of pro properties. For example, what is the posterior probability that this uh, Bayesian network structure contains a certain subgraph or estimating the probability that a certain vertex is an ancestor of the other. And in our paper, we also prove that this counting problem is number P hard which essentially means that it is at least as hard as counting the number of solutions to a set instance. This is not very surprising, but to our knowledge, it has not been shown before. And because these problems are hard in general, we look into what happens if we take the viewpoint of parameterized complexity in the sense that we constrain some aspect of the graphs somehow in the hopes that the computational problems become easier. So for example, we can look at the size of the vertex cover, which is, if you recall that, uh, it's a subset of vertices such that every edge has at least one endpoint in S in the undirected graph. And more precisely in our paper, we look into the size of the minimum vertex cover of its moralized graph. And we obtain this moralized graph by transforming this directed graph into an undirected one, such that if there's an, a directed edge between two vertices, we remove its orientation such that it becomes unoriented and undirected. And then we also add some new vert edges if for two vertices there's an they sh if two vertices share a child. So these are denoted by those red edges in this figure. And then we only consider DAGs whose vertex cover that have vertex cover of size at most k after this moralization operation. This problem is known to be hard in the optimization case, but it is still polynomial in the number of vertices if we the value of k is fixed by a results of Koronen and Parviainen. So our paper has three main contributions. We show nearly a quadratic speedup for this parameterized structural learning problem, and also present the first counting and sampling algorithms with this parameterization. And these complex theoretical results are complemented by giving hardness results on how hard it is to solve these problems. So let's talk about the faster learning algorithm. The main idea behind Koronen and Parviainen's algorithm is that they distribute the vertices into two components. There's the core and the periphery. And the core contains the vertex cover of the graph as well as the parents of that vertex cover. And it should be observed that this 
each vertex in the vertex cover can have at most one parent outside it yeah. because otherwise these two vertices would share a child in the vertex cover and therefore we would add a moral edge between them and therefore this vertex cover would no longer be the vertex cover of the moralized graph. And then there's the periphery that contains the remaining vertices and they cannot have, have any children. And the crucial observation here is that the core and the periphery can be optimized independently of each other. So in the previous work, they iterate over all possible sets N1 and N2, so all possible cores, and then optimize it using the classical dynamic programming algorithm. But because the size of the core is bounded, this takes only a polynomial time in N for a fixed K. And then for the periphery, they find the best parent sets for each of those vertices. And again, because they are from the core, whose size is limited, this is polynomial in N for a fixed K. And in our paper, we show that <clears throat> we, it is sufficient to only search over all possible vertex covers. So we do not need to search over all possible sets of their parents. And we do this by distributing the remaining vertices between the set of its uh, parents of the vertex cover and the periphery using dynamic programming while maintaining information about the vertices in the vertex cover that already have parents in it. So the main ideas are to assume that we have already computed this for the specific vertex cover as well as the first i minus one of the remaining vertices such that a certain subset of the vertex cover has already parents outside it. Then when we add the i-th vertex, we essentially guess the set of a subset of vertex cover that the i vertex should be a parent of, and then update the optimal parent sets for those vertices, as well as pick the optimal parent set for the i vertex such that the core remains a dag and a dag. And this takes three to the power of k times n to the power of k plus something polynomial in n as its time complexity. Uh, then about sampling. Sampling is much harder than optimization because there's the issue of duplicate counting in the sense that there are multiple ways of representing the same DAG. For example, this DAG can be represented in four possible ways. So we would like to establish some sort of canonical form for each DAG that is easy to sum over. And because it defining such a canonical form is a bit hard, we settle for limiting the number of duplicates we count and then fix this issue later. So we define these parent decompositions, which are partitions of the vertex set into those sets N1, N2, and P, such that all the vertices in the core must have a child. And because this core can con contain at most two K vertices, it is trivial to show that there can be at most two to the power two K parent decompositions and a bit more careful analysis shows actually that the upper bound is to the power of K. And this upper bound is tight for certain kinds of chain graphs. So the main idea within the sampling is that we iterate over all possible parent decompositions such that we compute the total weights of each parent decomposition. And then after this pre-computation step, we sample first a parent decomposition and then a DAG from that parent decomposition. And then by beforehand determining some unique canonical parent decomposition for each DAG, we accept that DAG if and only if it comes from that parent decomposition and otherwise we reject it and draw another sample. And this fixes the distribution of DAGs. So how to compute the weight of the parent decomposition? We fix those sets N1, N2, and P, and also pick a subset of the uh, vertex cover that should be the sinks of the core. And for this to be a parent decomposition, this, this subset of the vertex cover must have children in P by definition. And then similar to the optimiz optimization case, we can sum over the core, uh, structures of the cores and the structures of the peripheries independently and then take the product by combining them. And this corresponds to computing a covering product for the peripheries and using dynamic programming over 
the so-called root layerings for the cores, but these are a bit technical and we can discuss them at the post direct session, for example. And then because each tag has at most two to the power of k parent decompositions, if we take the total weight of all parent decompositions, we obtain a two to the power of k approximation of this total weight of all DAGs. And then the question is how to use this for sampling. So because of the way we compute these total weights, we can apply stochastic backtracking. And so we first pick those sets N1, N2, P, and S at random proportionally to their weights. And then from within that parent decomposition, we can sample those edge structures for the core and the periphery independently of each other. But as I mentioned before, this makes some of the DAGs be more likely than the others in the sense that they, they aren't supposed to be because they can come from multiple parent decompositions. And this is fixed by using rejection sampling. So we have chosen in our paper this acceptance criteria that we accept the DAG if and only if its parent decomposition has the lexicographically smallest set N2, which is testable in polynomial time in N, given that the value of K is fixed. And actually the exponent of N doesn't depend on this K in this verification step. And otherwise we reject the sample. So let's take a closer look on the probabilities. If we let this W, N1, N2, P, S, denote the total weight of that specific parent decomposition with that specific set of sinks in the core. And further let G be a DAG from such a decomposition. Then the probability of first sampling the uh, parent decomposition is this W, N1, N2, P, S over U, which was the upper bound we computed before over all parent, set, uh, parent decompositions. And then the probability of sampling this DAG from within that parent decomposition if is the its core over the uh, weight total weight of the parent decomposition. And this weight of the parent decomposition gets cancelled out here. And so if we let part G be the number of parent decompositions of G, we get that at the first step before rejection or acceptance, the probability of sampling G is part G times its core over this normalizing constant. And because only one of those is accepted, this acceptance probability becomes proportional to its score. And then we also get that the expected acceptance rate will be this uh, sum over the scores of all DAGs over this normalizing constant, which we know that it is a two to the power of K approximation of the total weight. And therefore we get that the expected acceptance rate is at least two to the power of minus k. And by interpreting each of these samples as a Bernoulli distributed random variable, so rejection corresponds to zero and acceptance corresponds to one, we can actually estimate the total weight of all basic network structures that respect this constraint of the vertex cover number. And by multiplying this empirical acceptance rate by u, we get that an estimator for the total weight that has a, a arbitrarily good precision because means of Bernoulli distributed variables had, have good concentration bounds. And so to conclude, we presented new algorithms for parameterized learning, counting and sampling. And this table here uh, compiles what we know so far about these problems. So for optimization, sampling and counting, the, all these algorithms have polynomial time in N given that the value of K is fixed. But because all these problems are known to belong to certain parameterized complexity classes, it is unlikely that we are able to get rid of this dependence between the exponent of N and K. And in future, it, it's interesting to see how these results relate to other parameterizations, for example, are the known bounds there the best possible? Or 
if we look into sampling and counting in those cases, uh, can we get similar parameterized complexity results there as with the optimization case? And perhaps most notably, how much do we need to restrict the class of the graphs to actually obtain fixed FPT algorithms for sampling and counting, which means that uh, they, the exponent on n does not depend on this parameter value. And some potential directions there are, for example, the number of edges in the Bayesian networks, which is known to have an FPT time algorithm for optimization by a result of Niels Grutemeyer and Christian Komusiewicz. But it is unknown for now whether those results extend, for example, to sampling and counting. So with this paper, we wish to initiate discussion on that. And thank you. Um, let's welcome the um, uh, Christian for the discussion. Christian. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. OK, thank you. So thank you very much for the uh, invitation. Uh, should I share uh, the screen or? Ah, OK, yeah. So, <clears throat> so before coming to, let's say, uh, my main takeaway, uh, I would like to mention that I really like this uh, uh, dynamic program, which improved the running time for this uh, learning of the optimal vertex cover. It's quite elegant. Um, and uh, not more complicated than the previous uh, algorithm, I would say. And uh, so now my main takeaways uh, are the following. So first, uh, I found it very interesting that this paper goes beyond the uh, optimization problem. And um, uh, uh, I, I particularly like this because the my community, this FPT community, it has a very uh, narrow focus often on these uh, optimization or decision problems. And here, um, I think it's quite, also the techniques are quite interesting. Um, the second point, I kind of, uh, uh, it's not uh, it's like uh, what's written on the slides is not completely correct. What I want to say is I found it interesting that after the pre-processing, the, uh, the sampling can be done in FPT time, actually. Uh, and uh, that uh, I found this a bit surprising. Um, and so my questions uh, for extending this work uh, are the following. Um, so the first is the paper deals with the setting where you have the uh, all the potential parent scores with uh, uh, parent sets with non-zero scores are given in advance. So we have pre-computed some parent scores, and I would be interested in whether you think that the algorithms can be uh, adapted for this. Um, a next question, you kind of hinted at this already, that we would like to uh, increase the, the, set of, uh, um, the set of networks for which we can get positive results. And I would particularly interest, be interested in whether or not you can uh, do it for vertex cover size for the graph where the skeleton uh, uh, only has bounded vertex cover size. So this is the network where we don't add these moral edges which kind of make a big uh, um, a restriction. And I think I would like to stop uh, with that. OK, uh, thank you for your insightful comments. And let me start by answering the second question. Mm -hmm. I think we discussed this problem a little when writing the paper. And it seemed like something similar would be possible to do in that case as well. And you have also studied this problem in your paper in the optimization case. So we think that the, a similar approach would work, but we didn't do it right an exact proof. But something similar to those parent decompositions would perhaps work in that case as well. And uh, for the first question, uh, Well, I'm not completely sure yet. Uh, I, I have, we haven't thought about that yet. Yeah, I, I mean, it has to depend on the uh, on the scores, right? 
mm -hmm. you uh, like this can be done only for scores with a certain prob uh, properties yeah yeah of course mm -hmm. yeah. but like these algorithms work in general for like as long as we can have some access to some way of computing any sort of score that is at least non-negative everything should work still yeah and so the last point uh, this pertains to the problem after pre-processing do you think it's possible to to replace this uh, fpt time by polynomial time uh, or is there some reason that it's impossible i guess if we spend enough time on pre-computing then we can do pretty much anything because we can for example because as the core consists of at most 2k, 2K vertices we can for example build a list of all possible core DAGs if we want to and then you use some sort of binary search over that to sample from there in polynomial time in n such that it depends only something polynomial in k as well because okay. the logarithm of exponential would be still polynomial yeah. i see okay thank you very much Yeah, thank you. Any question from the audience or from the Zoom? Yeah, here's a question. Thank you so much for the brilliant, brilliant talk. Um, you mentioned about restricting the space of uh, of DAX to like to the uh, based on the maximum size of vertex cover. Um, do you mind sharing how restrictive is this um, class of of DAX, like in terms of the full space of DAX? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? I didn't hear the middle part. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned about restricting like uh, the DAX to a subset. Mm -hmm. by limiting the um the maximum size of the vertex cover um do you mind sharing like what's how restrictive is this subclass of dax compared to the full like full space of dax well you can imagine it in a sense that it's an extension of naive bayes so this core has a little very little size and this enables only like in general DAGs can be really long in the sense that it can be a chain graph of all vertices. So it contains long paths. But if the size of the core is limited, then there cannot be very long paths. So this immediately puts a large constraint on the space of possible structures. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.